Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello, welcome to Pop Turnative. This is the podcast and talk show where we have digital discussions, the worlds of TV, film, news, pop culture, sports, everything really dependent on the guest. Talk about it all. As always, I'm your host, Premiotis. On social media, you know me as Petey Beats. March 26th, today, actually, Mighty Ducks Game Changers is dropped on Disney+. Plus. But we were actually speaking to a member of the original Mighty Ducks. She was in Mighty Ducks, the, all three movies. She's also in Wet Out American in Summer. You may recognize her from other things as well. Marguerite Moreau is with us. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big day. I have to celebrate it in, in a really... You know, just like duck worthy way. It's a huge it's a huge day. Um, thank you so much for doing this. I mean, mm-hmm. first of all, has it even hit you that there were three Mighty Ducks movies? Cause that's something that blows my mind too. You did three Mighty Ducks mm-hmm. movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like seminal, uh <laughs> child, like a high school experience. Like I had two high school experiences, one on a hockey rink and one in actual high school. I but know, no, it-, it hasn't hit me to answer your question. I'm just still sort of like, did that happen? I guess it did. It is it is just pretty crazy as well. And you know, news surfaced that, you know, the, the show was coming out. And it's interesting. Mighty Ducks Game Changers, a lot of information kind of got sprinkled in, right? We found out they were making the show on Disney Plus. We found out Emilio was gonna be involved, then the teasers, and then cats out of the bag, the quack attack is back. You guys are gonna be part of an episode, which is amazing. I mean, you tweeted you you went on Instagram about it, but what was that kind of like seeing everyone again and kind of being part um, returning to this iconic franchise, Marguerite? Well, I don't think you often get to return back to your first job that you ever did and think about all the mistakes that you made, yeah. but also like um, the friendships that you made. And I definitely turned to the writer at one point and we were sitting uh, with our skates and our sticks. And I was like, I can't remember what age I'm supposed to be playing because the minute <laughs> I put on the whole uniform, I just was conning again, like immediately. I spent hours and hours and hours in that in that getup. Yeah. And for me, it just was like this sense memory of like this super magical time. Yeah. No, so abs- nice. Absolutely. And it's interesting because... One of my favorite kind of scenes in all of movies, not only just Muddy Ducks, is when we first are introduced to Connie and the rest of the Muddy Ducks when you guys are playing on the pond, right? And he and he basically drives on the ice with the Zaboni, right? And we're mm-hmm. introduced to you and the Velvet Hammer and everything. But I wanted to know, I'm curious, what, like, from what you could tell me, what was that day like for that scene? Because that's the scene that started it all, right? That we inter- were introduced to everyone. That's, yeah, that's and I think that was our scene. first scene that we shot, and it was freezing. Really? So Emilio drives onto the ice. It's 40 below. Uh, it's so cold <laughs> that we had, like, sleeping bags around us between takes and, like, things with heats like taped into our skates, but we're so excited, but we don't even like have real clothes on cause it's like costume. And we're all just like, is this what a movie is? But then <laughs> one of the PAs gets his entire jacket lit on fire from standing too close to one of the um, heaters. And then we were all as kids like awesome. So <laughs> it just was like, everything about it was surreal. Like in every sense. Do you ever go back and kind of rewatch, but just in general, not just Mighty Ducks, like go back and rewatch movies and there's things that you forget or like you look back and like, oh man, I forgot about that part. It's awesome. When he's saying, all right, scrimmage is going you, you, you. And they're like, and then they're like, we, we have names, you know? And he's like, I bet you do. I'm sure they're good ones. <laughs> so good. I might even learn them. Like he's so sour and upset. Like <laughs> I know I was constantly like, I don't get it. What's his problem? Why is he so nasty and grumpy? Which they've totally extended for the show, which I think is great in terms of like him as the hero character that like constantly has to keep checking in with himself. And that's what I love about how the the older ducks come in. And and we came to set with this new Game Changers crew thinking, Mm -hmm. oh my God, I thought I was a grown up when I was their age. And looking at their age now, and you asked, do I ever watch the old movies or any old things? It's mostly going, oh my gosh, we were babies. Like, 
first of all, how the hell do they ever get us to shut up and actually do anything? Cause we're all hanging out, but also too, like, how funny. They must have been killing themselves behind the monitor because we were falling all over each other and Carp <laughs> falls on top of Goldberg and then I crush on top of Averman and then Guy slides across. And it's just like kids being kids in like that magic way that just I felt like endeared me to the movie in a whole new way as an adult. Like I couldn't wait to show my kid. Yeah, no, for sure. And now, um, you know, you mentioned the Game Changer set and everything. What was kind of the experience kind of on set kind of showing up w interacting with the new kind of the new flock of ducks that we're going to kind of meet what, what was that all like for you and the rest of the ducks i was a little nervous meeting the new ducks you know i, I was like gosh i just was like who is this gonna be <laughs> and um they were so excited. And then immediately I started being like, okay, if anybody's dating anyone, you have to stay friends. It's going to be a very, very long history you'll have together. So nobody get in fights if you can. Try to be friends, even with the kids that are not just like you, because you're going to have lifelong friendships. It was like, I immediately went into mom mode and wanted to like protect their <laughs> whole experience for them. Because it is so special um, as a kid to be in making something like this. Absolutely. If you think about it, look, looking at, you know, the first month Mighty Ducks up to D3. I mean, what you like the original Mighty Ducks, the OG Mighty Ducks, what you guys have, your characters have been through. You've been through a roller coaster. There's like a lot more going on than people think. You know what I mean? There's the Goodwill Games representing Team USA. Then there's, you know, getting scholarships, Eden Hall Warriors. There's a lot going on. And there and and there they are, you know, Charlie and the Ducks through thick and thin. Um, what was what was that like for your character, Connie Moreau? Like the, the growth and, and development of Connie throughout the years in the three movies as well, because I find that interesting. There's so much growth from all the characters in the three movies. Yeah, I think for her, it was just still becoming a better and better player. They didn't really bridge off in too much of a romantic thing. That was always just like a solid thing she had on the side with her mm -hmm. guy that she really liked. But that <laughs> by the end, I felt like she could go on. And if there was like a U.S. team that was ever made for women at the Olympics, yes. Connie would be like right there. And so that's what I always thought was her. She like was about the hockey. And that's what I like about the Mighty Ducks, uh, the first three. And I think still, too, in the Game Changers is they have so much hockey in the actual show and it's yeah. like the end of mighty ducks 2 is like what 20 minutes of hockey yeah Guy and connie great. was always one of my favorite dynamics though that was because there's sometimes mm -hmm. yeah, sometimes <laughs> even even in the third you know the, yeah. there's, there's there's arguments and everything like they don't they don't shy away from the relationship of connie and Guy. <laughs> jeez i mean garrett and i always got along but i'm like what was connie marguerite going through <laughs> she had a lot of sass all of a sudden she's pissed that's something we don't realize too you look back when you guys win the championship in the first one right there's that little I have to tell you about that kiss. Okay, I please let me tell you. Okay, yeah. so the Connie and Guy kiss at the end of Mighty Ducks one, I had been looking forward to for like the whole movie. We shot it on like the last day. It was like the last shot of a six months thing of my first movie. I was like, it's going to be this romantic thing, you know. I just was really into romance, and we smashed into each other, and they were like, we got it. And I saw it, and I was like, no, no. <laughs> of course, now I'm like, this is the cutest thing ever. Like, of course, I'm like four times bigger than him and just clock into him. There's there's so much there's so much stuff too. And I remember a while ago I had an opportunity also uh, to interview Robert Lieberman, who directed the third Money Ducks. And as a kid, as a fan, because I'm we're fans of the movie. I'm from Canada. Hockey's my life, right? I was always irritated by the sequence. Like I get you're trying to show that you guys can't play defense and you blow mm -hmm. an eight goal lead. Mm -hmm. But you, you blow an eight goal lead. And that always frustrated me as a kid against those the other team, the, those bears of the third. That always mm -hmm. yeah, it could have been sorry. Like, well, why couldn't it have been like five nothing and you lose six five? You know what I mean? Why well, couldn't it have just been like it's just eight goals? It's like you guys blew it. You know I mean? Well, sometimes you really blow it, man. <laughs> you really have sucky days. And uh I think that that is also part of like the underdog story. And that you one stinks because really... that's a tie, yeah. right? You technically get a point out of that one, but like that's that was like worse than a loss in that. that you gotta that tell me. Line. You gotta tell me because I don't know that storyline. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm like. I don't remember. <laughs> well, I no, gotta... it's just because you know you guys come in and you're 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 hot shots and everything, and then basically you you end up 
giving up an eight goal lead because Charlie doesn't want to play defense and everything. And Charlie, you know, who in the second movie doesn't chooses not to play. <laughs> now he doesn't want to play defense. I mean, let's There's hope so- when Charlie comes back. Mm-hmm. That he has done some therapy because you There's know a lot going on. Yeah, good. it's true because he gives Adam Banks he gives he gives Banks his spot comes back for the injury because they bring in Russ Tyler. Yeah, there's so many things going on. Um, but you know you can never you can never predict Margaret. Like I asked Matt Doherty, who played Lester Abram in this question too. You can't predict how big the franchise is going to be, right? Like no. you can't. But did you kind of have an, a little bit of an idea kind of being on the set with like Emilio and everyone be like, this is cool. Like, this feels special. Was there ever, did that ever sink in at all? I mean, you never know, but like. Yeah, I mean, it was my first movie. Yeah. Um, I had done a couple things before then. But in terms of like thinking if the movie had any legs beyond just the making of it, it felt so special. I never wanted it to end. And then. But not like there would be a sequel, yeah. except on the very last day we shot Emilio getting on the bus to go join the minor leagues. And the the producer ran over and whispered something in his ear and he said, one more take, one more take. And it was on us. And the camera was on us. And then Emilio comes out and he goes, see you next year. And he throws that as the extra. And that reaction that you see on camera is all of us being like, do we get to do this again? And then I lived in uh, Orange County. So when they uh, announced the team for Disney, mm-hmm. I like, I, I just will never forget my mom, like yelling for me to come down and look at the front of the newspaper. Yeah. And it was like, uh, my home team was going to be made about the movie I was in. And I was like, what kind of world am I living in? So, you know, mine went from like, never been in a movie to like, the, like you can't even explode it even more than that. Cause I've never heard of another movie doing that. Well, I've never also heard of another movie. Like, your character, Connie Moreau, is on a team, right? That was yeah. made for a movie. That yeah. was That's what made, I'm saying. And then they made yeah. a pro team after that. Like, it's crazy. And it was my local team. I was like, <laughs> oh, my God. I have to check my ego at the door because I was strutting that day in high school. It is so cool. Um, you know, we're talking about Mighty Ducks, but, you know, you've, you've also got a chance to work on some other really, really cool projects as well. You know, with How American Summer, with Paul Rudd, and, of course, um, Shameless, the early seasons of Shameless. Impactful storyline. Shameless, I feel like, is that show that just never kind of goes away. Like, I talk about that show all the time because everyone's, like, catching up or starting mm-hmm. it, right? Like, so... Um, you know, did you kind of like you did like, the Mighty Ducks and you did what American Summer, which is more of a comedy, and you do drama. Did you always want to kind of be a well like well rounded in terms of the diverse amount of things you wanted to work on as a storyteller and actor, Marguerite? Was that the plan? Like, do you want to just not Absolutely. just work in one thing? Oh, I want to do as many things as possible. Yeah. I still have like a list. I'm like musical, <laughs> western, sci fi. You know, I'm ready to go. Yeah, because it's, yeah. it's 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 really cool to see that um, you know. You look at all all three projects that I just named, Mighty Dog, Shales, Whatever, because I'm like all completely different, like yeah, completely yeah. different. You know what I mean? I feel um, so grateful, yeah, that, that I think, have that. Do you think Shameless is is? I mean, Shameless is just like just very real and very raw. Is that simple? Yeah. How why that's so like why you think it's so popular? Like it's just a real raw show. Well, I see Shameless as a comedy that comes out of, it's like just, it's so real and raw, it's funny. We can yeah. relate to it on such a deep level. So mm-hmm. the pathos kind of humor is my favorite. And yeah. and so when I got that appointment, I was like, oh, you just cannot mess this up. You just cannot, like, you just have to go in. I think I brought in for a gun that I had to use, like a paintbrush and was like, guys, I'm so sorry, but I need to use this. And uh, and they were like, okay. And I just had the best time. And to hear that I got was going to get to play Linda, I just, it's one of my most favorite jobs I've had in my whole life. Yeah. And that's a huge storyline as well. That's like a big storyline at the grocery store and everything. That, yeah. that kind of starts everything. What can yeah. make an argument? You know what I mean? Yeah. I was always so sad they didn't bring her back because of that, because it yeah. was, she's so fun. But it really, I think they took it more um, for the kids, like that mm-hmm. storyline. But the show's so. I, absolutely incredible and so funny. I know it is. It yeah. is crazy, and I, I did mention Wet Hawk American Summer. I mean, that's that's mm-hmm. classic. I mean, that's no more. That's not much more I could say. That's a classic movie. You can you call my mom and tell her that because sometimes <laughs> she's like, I just don't get it. I mean, do you have to kiss Paul Rudd like that? Like, it's not that funny. And I'm like, Ugh. well, what is? It's interesting because we're in. I call this like we're in the like the new age of clips because clips and memes and gifts just like are everywhere, right? Mm-hmm. So that whole scene is like 
you can't escape that 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 scene. That's on YouTube. That's everywhere. You know yeah. What I, mean? <laughs> I mean, there could be worse things that that I could be stuck seeing. You know. <laughs> no, but it's the same thing with like the Mighty Ducks. Are, does it blow your mind all like the fan theories and everything though with Mighty Ducks? Like, like I mean, do you keep up with the fan? There's always fan theories, right? Like, what well, would beyond to this character. Like, oh no, I don't know anything. Well, there's all these. Fan, there's me? all these. So it's interesting because you know, um, and I'm really excited for everyone to see Mighty Ducks Game Changers because um, I've just seen the pilot so far and I loved it. It's so good, so funny, um, amazing. But I mean, you there's an opportunity that. I think you all saw with talking probably the Brill and everyone else in Emilio where the new fans and the OG fans are going to kind of come together. Yeah. And it's a really special moment. We saw that with shows like Cobra Kai on Netflix. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And that's what's going to happen. But with that comes a lot of like theory. You're going to see there's going to be a lot of theories that they're going to be like, what if, uh, you know, uh, Connie and Guy has have a, have a daughter that joins the team? There's going to be all those mm -hmm. theories are going to come up. Just letting mm -hmm. you know to be prepared for those. <laughs> There's so many. One of my my favorite kind of, it's not, I'm going to make it. You know, I'm going to make it a gift for me. My favorite mm -hmm. is when you guys get the ducks were sponsoring you guys. You go, yeah. you go to the store and yeah. Charlie, oh. the whole stick, the sticks in the fall. Do you remember that part? Oh. That's the best. Yeah. <laughs> how's like, life, how's oh. This is how my life is going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, that whole thing and the 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 skating through the sky the sky lights or whatever they yes. are like uh, in Minneapolis was just the coolest I because know. we after after we would get wrapped because we were there in downtown we just like take off yeah. as like little twelve year olds with our per diem and we were like ah. And then we'd, we just go crazy and could skate any, everywhere. It was great. Absolutely. Did you have an opportunity? Was there, was there, um, I don't know about, you know, cause you know, they announced, you know, that you guys would be on an episode. There were stills and everything. Um, was that kind of a couple of days on set? Was that one day on set? What was that like? Oh, well it was during COVID. So we had two weeks of quarantine yeah. and then they switched around the schedule because some, some somebody maybe got COVID of the last show. Okay. And so we got this week of bonding while mm. the uh, Los Angeles Dodgers were winning the World Series. So every day we'd get together and go hiking or something up to Whistler. Justin uh, is from Vancouver and would just take us everywhere. And then we'd all get together and uh, watch the watch the game. So by the time we spent our four days on set, we had re-gelled so hard. And because um, we had all been in quarantine, we didn't have you know to wear masks um, yeah. while we were shooting inside and stuff like that. I mean, obviously not when you're when you weren't shooting, you were wearing masks, but we For could sure. be together. Yeah, and you were so like the bubble, right? We were in the bubble. So, and Emilio had had COVID, so he was like right in there with us, and <laughs> and to talk and hang with Emilio on the level when we're all the same age was super cool. Was there a lot of recollecting going on? Was there a lot of memory oh scenes? Like, how much did that happen? Yeah, I think like <laughs> Emilio, we kept being like, "Do we seem different?" And he was like, <laughs> "No." Was there any like opportunity to kind of um, when you were like working like because uh, we ha we don't we haven't seen the episode yet so we don't know what the interactions were but was there yeah. any opportunity to talk to the new ducks a little bit give them a little bit of advice was there any oh, uh, yeah. there opportunities there oh yeah any chance I could I would go over with the girls and they were thrilled like definitely we got the the word down the pipeline that they were super excited to meet us and hang with us and we're hoping that we would just be available for them and yeah. we fully were and so there was just a really nice they were learning to play hockey some of us were remembering how to play hockey some of us definitely still know how to play hockey yeah and in that vulnerability of us all sort of just because you're getting to know each other on the ice like literally chatting on the ice getting tired and sitting on your butts on the ice there's something about the camaraderie of being on a team even when you're just shooting a show about it that you break down these walls of professional at work or kid adult and everyone, you could see the kids just sort of like, Hey, what's up? And we were sort of like, Hey, what's up? How you guys doing? <laughs> like this I mean, takes the, a long time. I mean, you know, you, 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 you did the three movies. It's, you, you went through it. It's over. Like, the pressure's on them too. Right. <laughs> like if you think about For it. us, it was so <laughs> great. Oh, <laughs> it no. was that it, it but like it it's did, did it going back and putting on the skates and everything did it just like instantly just bring back all the memories and like man like i i need to like what was that kind of, as soon as you kind of step back on the ice what was that kind of like in terms of remembering all the old movies what did it hit did it was it kind of like right back to square one like man like i remember it's it, it 
feels like those times with everyone. What was that like? From the second I walked into the ice rink, when you smell the ice, you just revert right back. I wanted my hair in a braid. I immediately <laughs> wanted to, you know, get it all going. They were like, tie your skates faster. Do you want me to tighten them? I was like, you will not tighten my skates. <laughs> and then they're like, I think they need to be tighter. And I was like, I got it. And then I get up there. I'm like, I need them to be tighter. Right. This is how this works. So for some things like those logistics, you're, you're kind of bumbling along, but the heart of it, you just want to be the best, fastest hockey player. You want to knock someone over immediately. You want that freedom that you had all those years ago to just check the hell out of those guys it was so fun i know it, it's amazing marguerite thank you so much for coming on pop turn i really appreciate sure. it of course thanks for having me and thanks for celebrating game changers with all the ducks game it's been changers. really nice to see yeah no it's, yeah it, it's great they're they're all it's just they're all just so like excited like that i know <laughs> it's great it, every episode every interview is just like i'm so excited i want people to see it <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> which is amazing yeah. um where can people follow you on social media to keep up to date with everything uh i'm at marguerite moreau on instagram and twitter Amazing. Maybe we'll yeah. see some some throwback posts. Maybe with the the mighty maybe the, you never know the mighty ducks the throwback mighty duck posts, season. future posts, maybe <laughs> even some behind the scenes. I got it all. Stay uh, tuned. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, this has been pop turn to this. <laughs> I don't even know how this. See, we broke it. We broke, broke it. The duck. <laughs> Well, this has been Pop Turn. You just not call slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. Until next time, it's Marguerite Moreau and PD Beats signing off. The Quack Attack is back. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.